You're listening to the SSPX Podcast and Episode 6 of our interview series. In this series, we'll take a look inwards and give you a behind-the-scenes look at Angelus Press, which is the engine, the communications arm of the society in the United States. Father Paul Robinson has recently taken over as publisher of Angelus Press, and we'll look at the history of the organization, the most important aspects, the visible work, the hidden projects, and we'll even ask Father to pick some of his favorite books that you can't find at Angelus Press. Of course, we'd love to hear your comments about what you'd like to see, either printed, in video, or in audio, in the comments below. Now let's join the editor of Angelus Press, James Vogel, and Father Robinson now. Father, thank you again for joining us. Uh, you are known a bit to those who watch our podcast already, but uh, can you introduce yourself again, especially since this podcast is about Angelus Press with your new title and what that entails? Well, Jim, I, um, I think I would just firstly like to introduce myself as a longtime friend of Jim Vogel. Um, <laughs> it's a, a particular disposition of, of divine providence in, in, in the mercy of God, <laughs> um, as, as I would see it, that we've uh, known one another for a very long time. And yeah. um, going back into the last millennium, um, where sure. I, as you recall, I, I dug up old emails and found email exchanges from us in, in the I late I can no 90s. longer deny it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And, and as I say, I mean, I, I think for every single one of us, we don't know um, where our life will, will take us. Um, and you and I, back back in the 90s, we were we were getting out there in the communication sphere, True. Uh, building our websites, right, and yep. um, trying to promote the faith in, in, in our little way back then, you know. Yep. Um, and here and we are. And at least for me, finding uh, the, the old mass and tradition, and yeah. I, I think you, you were raised in it or somehow you, yes, it was not, yes. that's not yeah, how you have traditional right? yeah. so yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and as i say i mean <clears throat> to to find ourselves here it's um, humbling but, uh, <laughs> about but 25 years later it's true you know collaborating in this work of evangelist press uh, yep. for the society of saint pius the 10th uh, not something that, that either one of us could have predicted. It was not on the bingo card. <laughs> <laughs> There's not even a good conspiracy theory about it yet. <laughs> but but it's it's it has happened. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, in in the disposition of God's providence, uh, we're we're now collaborating with with Angelus Press. Of course, um, you have a long experience with with Angelus Press. How many years has, has it been it's now? Been, uh, a little over eighteen, I think. Eighteen years. Yeah. And or 17, 17 or 18, 17 or 18. Um, and for me, this is something that's that's um, impressive about Angelus Press. It was it was founded in 1978. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been it's going to be celebrated its 45th anniversary this year. Mm-hmm. Um, there, you know, some some water has flown under the bridge. Uh, it's there, yeah. there's 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 a history there now to Angelus. Yeah. And it's a it's an interesting history, maybe to jump ahead a little bit, uh, yeah. because it did start 45 years ago, really, with uh, just a few laymen in Dickinson, Texas. Uh, I mean, really, in the chaos of of the late 70s, trying to get basic Catholic material and the confusion and the crisis to people uh, long before the internet. Father Pulvermacher, obviously. Uh, kind of formalizing that a little bit, and then mm-hmm. uh, the Society of St. Pius X kind of uh, taking Angelus Press under its wing and uh, you know, even to some extent getting the endorsement of Archbishop Lefebvre. But uh, certainly to this day, we continue to distribute and publish good books. We still have our magazine, which was also founded in 1978. But uh, I mean, the very podcast we're recording is a sign, I think, of the the extent to which it's developed. So you know, now between uh, everything from the conference, the the various ways we use audio and video, and the websites, uh, yeah. As as our as our new publisher, what do, what is the most important part of, of the Apostolate of Angelus Press uh, to you? Because even though you're new as publisher, you're certainly not new uh, to the work of Angelus Press. So uh, maybe yeah. you have some thoughts there. Yeah, well, um, st- stepping into this role um, and certainly relying a, a lot on on your own experience um, as the editor. For me, the the most important part of the apostolate is getting the word out about mm-hmm. tradition, 
Um, so first of all, to, to those who are already traditional ca Catholics, to provide them the resources they need to live their traditional Catholic faith, the, the uh, resources in the form of the printed word, sure. um, and also the, the online resources. Uh, but besides that as well, of course, <clears throat> the apostolate to the, the, the world, the, the, the larger Catholic world outside of SSPX circles, um, you would know better than I do how many people come to us in sure. looking for those, those resources, not, uh, of course, on the crisis of the church, so addressing mm -hmm. the crisis of the church, but, but also just uh, Catholic spirituality, uh, learning about the traditional mass, and mm -hmm. and wanting coming to us saying, um, "Give me the faith of my fathers uh, that I feel like I, I've been deprived of in the Novus Ordo world." So for me, the the most important thing is is simply spreading spreading traditional Catholicism. Sure, that's that's what we're about. Sure, and uh, you know I I. I would emphasize one thing, which is that oftentimes, you know, if we talk about, let's say, books or let's say material, tangible things on the one hand, and then podcasts or, or other electronic media on the other hand, uh, they're not mutually exclusive. It's, it's very often the case that someone will see a podcast or listen to a sermon or uh, uh, watch uh, a live streamed event and then go buy uh, a missal and or a catechism mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that can lead to uh looking at the closest latin mass which can look to uh, finding out well why what, what happened in the church why is it the way that it is and so f from my perspective uh, we're not we're not trying to reach two separate groups of of people right uh, we're not there, there's not this group that just reads books and this group that just reads things online i think there's a lot right. of overlap and i um yeah, I wonder how you see balancing that that expansion on our end as we grow into more audio and video, uh, and at the same time print more and more books. Um, yeah, yes. how, how, what's what are what are your thoughts about uh, yeah our approach to balancing that? Yeah, I think it's delicate. It's delicate, Jim. Um, because of the fact that that the, the printed word, yeah, uh, there is there is something more substantial yeah. there. Um, you know, I think of. Uh, Neil Postman's book um, about television and the visual media as mm -hmm. opposed to the printed media. With, with the printed word, there's something that is static and that remains. Um, and whereas whereas the, the, the visual media is just flashing and changing, it's, it's very ephemeral. And at the same time, um, it's not intrinsically evil. Right. Um, and it, it's, it's something that's becoming more and more prevalent that people go for information to the, the visual media or the audio media mm -hmm. rather than the printed word. So um, we, we, we definitely, I think, over time necessarily uh, are, are going to be shifting more towards sure. um, the audio and the visual, while at the same time, um, I believe it's, it's important that, that we maintain the, the printed media as well. Um, it might be in less concentration, perhaps, sure. um, but uh, in order, we, we have to continue to reflect and think seriously. And even <clears throat> on the side of, of our YouTube channel, for instance, yeah. um, or our, our news site, or what have you, um, I think people will note a, a little bit of a different spirit from from the typical YouTube channel. Sure. And, and that is that there were, we're not into uh, clickbait sensationalism. Uh, we're, we're not explicitly, as, as many channels are, just, just trying to get, grab your attention sure. for a short and superficial topic. Um, but we really are looking to instruct people in the faith. Um, and so uh, a, a lot of our, our podcasts are on deep issues, um, mm -hmm. and th they require a bit more effort, I think, on the part of, of the listener than the, the typical uh, YouTube channel. So I, I think that's, that's a big way in which we, we try to balance it out, is, sure. is um, to provide that audio and visual content, uh, but at the same time not cheapen it by, by just making it sensational and clickbait. Sure. Yeah. And maybe a good uh, a contrast, I mean, we do have a news site, or let's say we, we assist the Society General House with the English side of their news site, so fssbx.news, where there's almost daily analysis of the news. But I think that's important to emphasize, too, is that the Society 
doesn't have boots on the ground doing investigative journalism. It's more of looking at what's going on in the church and the world and, and giving some kind of uh, some kind of analysis for the reader to take away a perspective that you might not get somewhere else in the Catholic world. Uh, so even though that exists with the podcast, I think the idea, especially when you talk about clickbait or something like that, is that the podcast we do should be, for the most part, just as relevant five or ten years from now as they are today. So if you, I think if our Crisis in the Church podcast or even the series we're working on right now with vocations or the upcoming one on apologetics, there's a certain timelessness of the topic, if not the medium. Um, yes. I don't know if that's uh, maybe part of what you were, you were saying. Yes, exactly, exactly. So we're not reacting to the latest event, right. but uh, we're, we're, prov- we're working more on the level of principles and, and instruction in, in the faith. And um, as you say, with, with the Crisis in the Church series, you've got those, those two aspects. And one is that the, the topics that are treated um, yeah. are just ver- treated very thoroughly. Yeah. Um, so th- they're, they're, they go into great detail to basically... Um, expose the reason for why we take the positions we, we take in, 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 in very great detail. And, and on the other hand, um, they're, they're not about current events. They're, they're about things that have, that have happened in the past, or they're sure. simply about um, the traditional teachings of the church, that are things that have always been believed. Um, and while on the one hand, when, when somebody looks at their YouTube feed, you know, they're, they're, they, won't, yeah. they won't be looking like, oh, wow, this is some video about the latest thing going on, the latest scandal or the, the, the latest conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, they will be able to, for the indefinite future, be able to say, sure. if, if I want to be instructed on this topic, um, this video is, is available for me and, and I can go there and I can find a, a very deep presentation right. treatment of, of that topic. So on, on the one hand, we're, <clears throat> we're losing those viewers who are just looking to blow time on the sure. internet. <laughs> but, but we're gaining those, those more solid viewers who, who are wanting um, deep content. Yeah, and it has been encouraging to see that growth because I also, I, you can speak more to this than I can, but I think the reality is that as an apostolate of the Society of St. Pius X, um, it's not a humble brag, it's just the reality that uh, real life you know, lived out in the world. So uh, looking, if you're a, a regular person looking for where am I going to go to mass? If I have a family, where am I going to raise my family? What kind of schools are available? Um, you know, what, how are things going in the church in the world? And, and where am I, what am I supposed to do as far as my duty of state goes? Uh, the Society of St. Pius X offers a sort of uh, a viable uh, uh, path forward that uh, a random, let's say YouTube or or even podcast series doesn't uh, doesn't provide right. So it's more than just giving you the principles. I mean, it's the whole nature of the organization really is. Uh, I'll let you I'll let you give the pitch, but um, we can say that Archbishop Lefebvre did not found the Society of Saint Pius X uh, to do podcasts. But uh, no. there, there's a reality there that's uh, that hopefully we point to um, that that you represent better than I do. So maybe you want to speak about. Uh, I mean, really, the just yeah, the work of the society and how that undergirds all of uh, all of the efforts here. Yes, yes, I, I think that's um, a, a very valuable point that you make, Jim, and and that is that that Angelus Press is is a piece of, of an entire picture. Mm-hmm. Um, it, that that when you when you zoom out and you see the entire picture, that emphasizes all the more that spirit of our. Of our YouTube channel, <laughs> and that is that that we we uh, in the society we play the long game, um, and that's that comes from our founder Archbishop Lefebvre. Um, he wanted to establish uh, traditional Catholic communities um, through by forming priests, good good priests. So mm-hmm. he had this vision of forming good priests, priests who would provide schools, priests who would provide parishes, priests who would provide the traditional sacraments, and. Here we are in 2023, and, and we've, we've been around for over 50 years now. Yeah. And I, I think about some of our mission chapels, even where, where we've been, we've sent a priest to, to those chapels um, almost without fail every single Sunday for like 30 or, or, or even sometimes 40 years, uh-huh. um, and, and, and been able to provide the Mass and the sacraments for those, those people, and, and therefore provide uh, a haven 
yeah. for those families, um, a place for where they can go to to receive um, the true faith. So we, uh, Angelus Press, as, as you mentioned, can, can be part of, of people's journey sure. um, and can be part of, of nourishing them while they're, they're going to our chapels. But the, the work of the society um, is uh, churches, schools, mm -hmm. camps, retreats, publications, podcasts, all of these things in, in order to save souls and, and to understanding that, that people have to live a complete life. Sure. Um, and it, it's, it's not we're, we're not sitting in front of webcams to, to make money and, and yeah. to run a business or um, to see what sort of YouTube revenue we can, we can generate. And I, and I don't, I'm not, I'm not wanting to say that to criticize people who, no, who do make sure. their living off of that. I mean, okay, fair enough. Um, they, maybe they have a very good message. I don't know, you know, but um, that's, that's not what we're about. We're, we're, we're founded simply to, for the work of, of saving sure. souls. And um, we have a, a family. We have, we have a spiritual family mm -hmm. um, that, that has all the components necessary for, to provide people with the, the things they need to save their souls. So um, there, there are a few questions, Jim, just because you've, you've been with Angelus Press sure. so, so much longer than, than I have um, that I would, I would like to ask you, um, since, since we're on the topic of Angelus and, um, and uh, perhaps instruct me a, a little bit <laughs> as, as I've I'll, stepped I'll into this best. role uh, six months ago. So I guess many people may not know that there is an apostolic side of Evangelist Press and a bit of a, uh, an outreach to, to the prisons and other things. So maybe you could say something about that. Sure. And I would, yeah, I'd preface that by saying that, you know, in general, the way I look, or not just the way I look at it, but it's true that Angelus Press is an apostolate. So uh, you know, we exist to help the society and to uh, do all the things you just mentioned. Uh, but... Uh, we have to balance the reality that we have a, a growing team of employees and we have uh, bills to pay. We have studios now and we have, uh, we have big plans for the future with the fact that ideally, if I can put it this way, we would love to give away as many things as possible for free uh, for the salvation of souls. It's why we don't charge for the podcast. It's why we, uh, we don't charge for the news site. Uh, many of the newsletters that we help uh, the district or the general house with, whether that's the Regina Taylor Report, the Foreign Missions Trust, uh, we, you know, those are all free publications. Um, but to your point, we do try to specifically uh, give away uh, content, usually in the forms of, of actual books, material things, catechisms to, mm -hmm. to priests. That's the first category, mm -hmm. um, especially priests who are looking for information about the traditional mass, priests who are looking for uh, traditional doctrine, or yeah, maybe even looking towards the society as a, a future home. Uh, we, we try and we do give away those resources uh, anytime we find someone looking for them. Mm -hmm. We do have a a robust and growing prison apostolate where people um, sort of either formally through some priests or through some laymen who have successfully started these programs identify <clears throat> the basic needs that a prisoner might have. And those can range everything from a Bible to works on the crisis in the church. So mm -hmm. um, we do solicit donations for those as well as occasionally trying, uh, trying to raise money for uh, donating books or religious goods to the missions. Obviously, the society is international. We've got uh, a number of places overseas that do speak English. And so um, when we can, and, and another thing we would like to grow is this work of you know, ideally getting books and materials as cheaply as possible, if not free, to these places. So, um, yeah, we, we take great pride in the, the quality of the books we print, and uh, we sell mm -hmm. them uh, justly and as reasonably as we can. Um, and I think that sometimes can be confusing. You know, well, why do you, you charge money for certain things you do, like your conference? We, we do have a conference, which is great every every year, and we, we love um, encourage people to attend. Uh, and at the same time, we do raise money for certain things which are not really intended to be revenue generating. So mm -hmm. uh, we try to make that distinction as much as we can. It might not always be clear, but, uh, but it all ultimately flows from the fact that our goal is to help the society save as many souls as possible, to help the church, 
And uh, the bottom line is that the more money that we uh, receive in donations, the more we can help uh, other souls reach the treasures that you might have. So, Okay. So w- would you mind just giving a, um, a few details about that prison ministry? I mean, uh, do, sure. do you have any stories, for instance, of, of prisoners who we've reached out to and they've appreciated the, the sure. materials we've sent? And what kind of materials are we sending them? Sure. So the first thing I would say is that it's not one program, meaning we ourselves don't don't organize this from here. What we've found over the years is that there were either pre-existing programs where, for instance, one gentleman in Texas, um, whom we've highlighted in the past, uh, Mike Bonjbach, has this little ministry where he has, uh, of his own uh, charity, started visiting prisons and, and finding out that um, even just trying to help the Catholics who are already there, uh, they mm-hmm. often don't have good material to read or they, they don't know where to go to get good material. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he I, he did quite a bit on his own, and with the help of his local priest. And then over the years, we've we've kind of formalized that, where he basically collects from prisoners, um, almost like a Christmas list, right? So okay. th- these are books I would want. These are books I would need, and um, and we try to accommodate as much as we as we can. So we try to start with the basics, right? If they're not a Catholic, uh, the Catechism, um, mm-hmm. Sacred Scripture, things like that. Uh, maybe some some basic spiritual reading, how to pray mm-hmm. the rosary, uh, mm-hmm. you know, how to uh, how to meditate, even things like that. And then th- for people who are interested in a little more of uh, the history of the Society of St. Pius X, the works of Archbishop Lefebvre, Open Letter to Confused Catholics, some introductory texts to the crisis. But um, in Texas there, they have, for instance, uh, I think once a month, Father Katzroff, one of our priests goes and says Mass, and I believe he's I believe he's even baptized and received into the church some prisoners. Wow. So that's, that's again, that's that's one man who's done a, a tremendous amount of work. But uh, there are other places in America where there are uh, efforts underway to, uh, you know, get something on ongoing like this. It usually does depend on some kind of person at the local level who can who can, uh, let's say, arrange the details because every state's a little different. Every prison is, frankly, a little different. But um, we do, in addition to that, keep up correspondence with a lot of these prisoners. So um, between the staff here and, and some some friends, some priest friends even, who we try, there are often, you can imagine, uh, questions of a spiritual nature that we receive from prisoners. And mm-hmm. we, uh, we have a priest or two that help us with those. So uh, it's incredibly edifying to to see the gratitude uh, a lot of these people are, are not um yeah, maybe historically didn't lead the best lives uh and it's <laughs> yes. it's true it's it's a mercy of god to find either the faith or tradition or 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 some place to get uh, some sustenance in yeah in 2023 but yes. again we hope to do more of that and as always if there are people out there who who do this work or who are interested in doing this kind of work uh, mm-hmm. we can do two things we can put anyone who is interested in touch with the people who are doing these, they might be able to learn something and start something on their own in that mm-hmm. way. And of course, um, anyone, uh, certainly anyone who, uh, who knows prisoners or is interested in this ministry in some way, uh, we're always happy to talk to them and explain what we do. And um, that's another great example where don- uh, donations go a long way in, um, in the prisons. So. Okay. And I, I suppose the prisoners themselves, they spread the word around. when they, they might. I don't know too much about that. Certainly in places where there's an active program, yeah. uh, they see people getting, getting books and things like that. But again, this is where a lot, uh, a lot can change from prison to prison. You know, they don't always, uh, an individual person doesn't always love an influx of books. Uh, you know, they get a lot of things sent for free anyway. So we, we have to almost establish a reason why these books are being sent. They've been solicited. They're not just, basically, we're not just spamming the prison with uh, free material. But <laughs> so far, that's, uh, that's been a hurdle, but one would be able to jump. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned the, the Angelus press conference. If I could switch gears sure. to, to circle back around to that. Um, just could you say a little bit more about what, what kind of experience that is for the people who attend sure. and, and also about this year's conference, what is planned for it, when it's going to happen sure. and where? Sure. Yeah. So the general idea for the conference uh, goes back to some meetings we had in 2010. Uh, and the idea of a conference itself, of course, is nothing new, both mm-hmm. uh, at, at you know, the general public and even for ourselves. But uh, the question was, well, what, what would make 
our conference unique, right? Why, why should the society do a conference? And uh, it is analogous in some way to what you mentioned earlier about uh, the nature of online versus uh, uh, real life uh, content. Yeah. We tend to, uh, we decided, I should say, and we've, we've kept it up until now, we pick mm-hmm. a theme and we try to build a set of talks around that theme. So mm-hmm. it can be the kingship of Christ, it can be the papacy, it can be something about Our Lady. And the reason is that, I mean, a conference itself is great. Um, it's three days of camaraderie with like-minded people, uh, sometimes getting to meet some of the speakers you may have read about or, or whose works you may have read themselves. Uh, usually we, we're blessed to have a bishop of the society there, so there's a pontifical high mass, which many people haven't seen. It's it's really quite an experience. Um, it's it's meant to be something where, um, you know, for a lot of people, you don't necessarily live a- around or with like-minded people most of your life. And so to have a weekend where, uh, you know, you're not just being formed, you're not just uh, able to have access to the sacraments, but that you can basically visit and spend time with with other traditional Catholics um, has has borne great fruit for us. But the purpose of the actual conference, let's say the formal element, is the talks, which we record and, and distribute. You know, mm-hmm. again, ideally forever, so that if you are sitting here now wanting, let's say, a traditional Catholic understanding of, um, let's say, what family life should look like, you can go back and by the audio from whenever, whatever year we did that, and it should still be just as relevant as it is, mm-hmm. as it was then. So that's that's kind of the goal. This year we are doing uh, what looks at first to be a kind of repeat. So I mentioned just now that we, we've done a conference on the family before. Uh-huh. Um, and of course, all of these topics can't be exhausted in a single weekend anyway, but yeah. the question of the family uh, has more than one aspect. So you have the sort of the questions in principle, uh, and then you have the modern world and how we apply, let's say, per, uh, the traditional Catholic principles to to the here mm-hmm. and now. So last year we focused on again what seemed to be a broad theme, which is you know, restoration and how that can be applied to different aspects of life and 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 the church's life. And this year we're going to do something on the um, the modern world and how especially, again, focusing more on the practical side of applying traditional Catholic principles to today. So uh, we've announced the the location and we've announced the date. That'll be at the, at the Overland Park uh, Hilton, uh, October 21 through 24 this year, same place we had it last year. And we should have a list of speakers and topics out in the next few weeks. So this is early January as we're recording. So by the time you see this, you might have, uh, there should be more information available. But uh, okay. yeah, Good. it's an exciting topic. And I think it's yeah. it's one that uh, is particularly, it's, it's one that's been asked for uh, many times, so. Yes, a lot of, a lot of big families out there uh, in the yep. traditional Catholic world and uh, looking for some yep. solutions to, to deal with uh, mm-hmm. modern issues. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, would you mind just speaking a little bit about the resources that that are available online, independent of of the YouTube channel? Sure. Um, but like uh, uh, the news site and sspx.org, and sure. and I, I think um, also that the the daily devotional that I think is becoming very popular. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Um, uh, so there are several things as you mentioned. We. Uh, we have we help manage the English side of the news site, so that is something that uh, you know more or less comes every day, especially during the week. Uh, shorter articles, uh, analysis heavy, based on uh, whatever happens to be in the news. That's at fssbx.news. You can get that by email as uh-huh. well. So just to clarify, yes. I mean, so this is um, news that that comes from overseas from our international house the general house of the society has a news service that operates in i think four different languages four or five different languages so we we sort of manage the english language side of that we translate and and publish what they yeah what comes from the general house and then in addition to that uh on sspx.org which is the district website we have news or articles that would be either more relevant to an american audience or uh come from the archives uh which sounds funny but you know yeah, once you've been in existence for almost 50 years, uh, there's a lot of content that's either been buried or, um, you know, isn't available in an electronic format. So uh, we try to 
yeah, use some of that material for different reasons, both for the sake of history. It's sometimes good to remember what came before us or, mm-hmm. or why certain decisions were made. And also, uh, I mean, we, we do have a kind of archive available online, but, um, you know, it's easy to get lost in it unless you know exactly what you're looking for. So there's that. You mentioned the Daily Devotional, which is relatively speaking a new project, but it's uh, it's a free daily email that you subscribe to from our from the district website sspx.org you get a, a small meditation usually from one of our books uh, a little uh, quote from the archbishop and then some liturgical information of the day the saints uh, sometimes the introit or you know, the reading schedule uh, and then sometimes also some news or additional like for big feasts or for things going on in the in the society's orbit like ordinations or uh, you know confirmations things like that mm-hmm. um, we also do have we have a separate website for the magazine for the Angelus, which is uh, angelusonline.org. That's in the middle of being uh, updated a bit, but you can get back issues of the Angelus there. I think mm-hmm. everything over uh, eighteen months is available online for okay. free. Wow. You can also subscribe to you can subscribe to an electronic version of the magazine there mm-hmm. if you'd like. Um, and then, of course, we do we do have social media profiles. We have things on places like Facebook and Twitter, but those are really just placeholders to direct you back to a lot of the things I just mentioned. But uh, you can still contact us at those places if you have questions or are looking for something. So, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and Instagram as well. There's the, the yes. Uh, yeah, and I, I think our, our podcasts are, are on a bunch of different platforms. Yeah, and YouTube and Apple Podcasts and a lot of the podcast-specific apps, they should be on all the major ones. Yeah. Maybe we, we can just talk a little bit about the magazine, Angelus sure. Magazine, um, and it, its its history and, it, and its um, current form. It was, it's been recently rebranded, right. um, from what I understand, and maybe you could just uh, say a little bit about that as well. Sure. Uh, there's a lot of history there, but I'll give you the I'll give you the brief version. Um, it did start again in 1978, and it was a very simple uh, way of of getting general news out to traditional Catholics. Um, if you go back and look on our archives, it includes things like where can I find mass if I live in this part of the country? Mm-hmm. Who has old copies of missiles or or books for a library for personal use um, and then what's going on in rome well, there was an aspect of of news that it covered in the 1970s when you could still cover news in a, in a periodical <laughs> right um and uh, you see in the 1980s this uh this shift uh towards more of a let's say a, a journal a proper journal uh, getting away i mean there's always still an element of news and an element but really it starts to it starts to uh to identify more as the publication of just really now the SSPX. So you're getting what's Archbishop Lefebvre doing, what's the society doing in America and the broader English speaking world. Um, this really does start to take up, uh, this, this gathers steam after the split of the nine in 1983, because without going into a lot of details, there were two districts in America with two magazines, and then there was <laughs> one, and the Angelus is the one that stayed with the society. So yes. uh, really it comes into its own then, and. Uh, okay proceeds apace through the 80s, and I would say in the 90s, um, uh, when Father Kenneth Novak uh, spent a good deal of time as the editor, um, he did, I would say, the first rebranding, right? He, he mm-hmm. professionalized it, uh, yes. got it into color, um, you know, really tried to standardize the, um, the process, meaning the, the way it looked, what you could come to expect, and, and then uh, starting for a time, what we've now, uh, we've now taken on, which is having thematic issues, similar to what we do with the conference. So right. you get a copy of the Angelus, mm-hmm. it's on a topic, um, and if you are interested in the topic, you'll keep it and hopefully return to it for, for many years to come. And then just, just two years ago, we rebranded again. Um, we decided, uh, kind of due to popular demand, to uh, move away from the mm-hmm. branding for the magazine, for the Angelus, and return it to uh, a more, let's say, color-heavy, art-heavy uh, let's say, easier to read format. And so mm-hmm. uh, that seems to be popular. And uh, we, we've we also um, shifted a little bit of the focus more towards more practical, and th- let's say, cultural aspects of Catholicism. So as always, we appreciate any feedback there, whether you loved one iteration of it or another, mm-hmm. um, if there are authors or themes you would like to see more of or less of, that's all feedback that we would love to have. And um, you know, the magazine has been in existence for 45 years, so um, we would like to see the Angelus stick around for another 45 if possible. 
Absolutely, absolutely. It's a great magazine, and yeah, um, they, they can people can find information about mm-hmm. how to subscribe on um, sspx.org or angelespress.org Angelus Angelus and angelesonline.org as well. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm trying to think about what what we haven't talked about, and I think it's the books. It is, I mean, it we, is the we, books. We haven't talked about the bread and butter. It is, it is in some way the most important thing yeah. that we do. So I'll ask you, as our, as our newly minted publisher, what are the most important Angelus Press books for you? In, in my mind, um, I think the, the most important books that we have are, um, are of, of course the, the books by the Archbishop, mm-hmm. um, like such as the Open Letter to Confused Catholics, or even even the the spiritual works, uh, the 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 book on the spiritual mm-hmm. life, um, and the, the various compilations of, of the sermons of the Archbishop, um, and Michael Davies' uh, Apologia Pro Marcella Fev, uh, for me is is really important, especially at this time where we're kind yeah. of going back in time as far as the judicial yeah. movement goes. Uh, we're, we're in a situation with Tradiciones Custodes and um, perhaps w- whatever might, might come after it. Mm-hmm. Um, we're in a situation that is similar to the early days of the traditional movement. And that, that history, I think, is, is very helpful for people who are wondering what, what's going on in the church right now. Um, but besides that, the, the, the Michael Davies books that, that we, mm-hmm. that Angelus has published for decades, you know, um, his, his trilogy on the council mm-hmm. and, and the mass uh, yeah. and other, other works of Michael Davies, like um, on religious liberty. Sure. I, I think those, those books are kind of like the bedrock of what we are. We, would you yeah, agree? I think so. And I think I'll, I'll, uh, maybe double down on what you said about the apologias. So for people who don't know, uh, these are basically blow-by-blow accounts of yeah. what happened uh, in the 70s leading all the way up to 1982. So primarily about Archbishop Lefebvre and the Society of St. Pius X, but really what was going on in the church at large. Yes. And um, you might actually think that these are academic or boring. I mean, it can be overwhelming. It's three volumes, and it's right. like, well, that's a lot of history to read. But it's it's a page turner in a lot of it ways. Is. It really there's a, is. There's a lot of history there that has been forgotten that is absolutely still relevant to anyone uh, yeah. trying to navigate the current chaos in the church. Um, so as an example, uh, somebody uh, once wrote in or maybe complained to us somehow that they they wish Archbishop Lefebvre had never used the term conciliar church because that seems to muddy the waters and, you know, is it a different church? And right. uh it's in the Apologia that you'll find that it was not Archbishop Lefebvre who invented that Benelli. term. Benelli. Benelli to Archbishop Lefebvre. Right. And so, I mean, it was almost tongue-in-cheek. I think you get the impression from the Archbishop, like, well, you're going to call it the Conciliary Church. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's, but that's just one example, um, the, the letters back and forth between Paul VI and Archbishop Lefebvre, and, and again, what, what the status was of the traditional Latin Mass, which was actually at that time, at least Rome was claiming it was abrogated. So, yes. Um, so all those things are, yeah, they're, they're worth going back to for many reasons, I say. Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, but, I, but I think there's, a, there's another aspect of the Angelus Press offerings where mm-hmm. um, on, the, on the level of, of spirituality and, and also for, for families, there's, mm-hmm. there's a lot of books that are now offered um, for, with regards to the Mass. The, the, you, there's the Officium Divinum, and mm-hmm. there's also the Missal, which I think is extremely mm-hmm. popular, 1962 Hand Missal. Yes. Um, but uh, as I say, a lot of books for for children um, yes. and uh, for for parents to instruct their children in the faith, or for them to have things to take to mass, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we're at the point where, although we're we're constantly growing all categories, we we aim to be a place where you can find everything you just mentioned, uh, and really then all of the above, right? So if you're interested in, in church history, we have books about that. If you're interested in the church's social doctrine, we mm-hmm. have books like that. And anyone who likes books knows that there are broadly speaking two kinds of books. You know, there's the kind you sit down and read cover to cover. Um, and then there's the kind that you want to have around to use, like a missile, right? You're not mm-hmm. going to read a missile back to back. Maybe you would, but not <laughs> normally. And yeah. so we've tried deliberately to have 
all of those things. So the kind of books like a catechism, which a family might need, or uh, yeah, Lives of the Saints, all, all the sort of classical Catholic books, um, mm-hmm. again, that we either publish directly or, or we distribute. Um, you know, we, again, for almost since the beginning, we've, uh, we've worked with uh, other Catholic publishers carrying their works. Um, there's certainly too much work to be done for any one Yes, one publisher, but sure. um, yeah, and and again, if there's if there's ever anything in particular, a topic, an author that people are looking for, we encourage them to ask us. But, uh, yes, yeah. how, how many how many books are, are are available through Angelus Press these days? Jim? If you if you count, they're not all counted equally because you have the ones we <laughs> printed, you have the ones we carry, and then you have booklets, you have uh, you know uh, all different kinds. It's it's somewhere between three and four hundred titles. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, good, good. Um, I could inflate that by, if I include all the booklets and pamphlets and articles, it's, right. it's over a thousand, but so I, won't, I the, won't do that. Yeah, the, like the encyclicals. The encyc- <laughs> uh, yeah, the encyclicals, I'm right. a big fan of encyclicals, but they're probably not, they're probably not <laughs> flying off the shelves. But. Uh, I am here for any pitch you want to make <laughs> for people to read encyclicals. <laughs> yes, yeah. So uh, maybe we could just talk a little bit about the uh, production schedule we, we have for sure. this year and, and some of the things we, we hope to, to bring out and also the initiatives we, we hope to have with our sure. podcast. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to go first or not. I can, I can at least share a few of the things from our production schedule that I think are exciting. Um, and I include the podcast uh, in that as well. I think uh, I mentioned it a little bit earlier in passing, but a uh, a series on apologetics, which, um, you know, as such has nothing to do with, uh, again, this is not an SSPX particular thing. This is really how to present uh, the most, well, how to, how to present the Catholic position on, on, let's say, the most common objections to the faith, mm-hmm. right? And uh, uh, I think we've actually technically started recording that, but that will, that will, yeah. that will go out through the entirety of this year. So that's an yes. that's an that's an exciting project, I think. Yeah, I've I've uh, actually yeah. recorded the first three episodes with, with Andrew, and uh, we're hoping they they appear later on in the month. And, and we've got a we've got a, a number of priests lined up to to do those Excellent. podcasts. But besides me, it's not it's not all just Father <laughs> Robinson. Thanks be to God. Um, but uh, we're we're hoping to have them come out um, each week, starting at, at the end of January, and, and have between uh, 30 to, to 40 yeah. uh, episodes in that series. Excellent. Uh, on the book side, I have to say one project that I think, it's dear to my heart, but I think everyone will appreciate is is the picture book of Archbishop Lefebvre. So mm-hmm. uh, an actual formal coffee table book that has uh, high quality images with a little bit of history with captions and things about his life. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like there's there's a dozen or fifteen pictures of Archbishop Lefebvre that everyone has seen and knows, right? Um, but his life is really extraordinary. You know, starting starting in France and the years in Africa, and certainly the years as Superior General of the Holy Ghost Fathers. And I sure I don't think we're going to find any new pictures at this point. But we have been able to. And I, I, when I say we, it's certainly not just us. Um, I think of uh, you know the Seminary to Cone and uh, Father Wegner in Austria, a whole team of people in the District of France as well have worked on. Uh, collecting and cleaning up these pictures to the extent that we can, and so um, we're hoping to get that out in 2023. And I think that'll be that'll be of great interest. Yeah, uh, definitely. And we're finishing the Father Trobadec series, so okay. Anyone who's familiar with uh, the books that follow the liturgical year, the little books of meditations, also often mm-hmm. part of those daily emails, the devotionals we mentioned. Um, those are all translated from French, and we should be finishing those this year. So it will finally make a complete series. God yeah, and, uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's that's sort of like series of books uh, for for meditate for Throughout daily daily meditations. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kind of a, a little reminds me a little bit about the Year of Grace by Father Parsh, P.S. Right. Parsh. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but it, but uh, briefer than than Father Parsh. Yes, but, but uh, definitely something to to think about each day to meditate upon. Yeah. Related to the liturgical year, yeah, um, and I, I mean, with, with regards to the podcast, um, we're also hoping to get more of the questions with Father mm-hmm. um, series uh, episodes of, of that series, uh, also more interview series, like like here at the yes. studio. Uh, uh, hopefully, get more people involved in that. Um, and I'm I'm just throwing this out there, but but eventually to 
to uh, grow our YouTube channel. Um, I, I'm hoping that we will be able to have some some live recordings yes. um, where people can comment or, or ask questions in real time. Um, again, on uh, that we we would be talking about uh, l- less about newsy things, sure. but a bit more uh, about timeless issues uh, such as uh, the the encyclicals of the popes or sure. um, uh, other other aspects of the faith. Um, and I think that that would be something well appreciated by by our our subscribers. Sure, I agree. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I don't know, Father, again, as, as the new publisher, are there any particular initiatives you are looking forward to launching or being a part of this coming year? Uh, maybe being in things on the production schedule or... Um. Yeah, I, I think uh, that we, we have a, a lot of interesting titles that we're going mm-hmm. to be publishing um, in, in the upcoming year. Um, right now, I'm just reading through the the biography of St. Thomas Aquinas mm-hmm. uh, by Brother William of Taco. He, he was a contemporary of St. Thomas Aquinas, and um, just a really, really nice biography. I, I think it, that's that's going to be um, uh, well liked. I think it's book. true to say it's the oldest biography of St. Thomas. The oldest, that we know, right? the oldest biography, or never never before translated from Latin. Is that yes, correct? yes, yeah. never before translated. First time it's going to appear in, mm-hmm. in the English language, which is astonishing. I, I think we've all heard a lot of stories about St. Thomas. Sure. We know the stories that are that are in there, but sure. it's, it's quite something to see them um, where they came from. So that's the, something that that I think will be popular. Um, and, and as I say, uh, definitely, um, I'm, I'm hoping that that we can uh, be able to produce uh, more content for mm-hmm. our YouTube channel. It, it's kind of one of the, I think, negative sides of, of modern media is that people expect a lot of content. Yeah. You have to always be producing content, and that's that. I don't think that's who we are because right. we're not we're not newsy, but. Um, I think we do have a lot of things to talk about sure. um, and some good content to provide. And I'm, I'm hoping that we can ramp that up a bit in, sure. in this in this year. Um, so, uh, and, and hopefully, as I say, achieve our, our purpose of, sure. of getting getting the word about out about traditional Catholicism. I think it's a, it's a key moment right now, Jim, um, with regards to the traditional Catholic movement. We've had uh, so many people, uh, more people interested in us or, or looking for what we provide uh, mm-hmm. than in past years because of the crackdown on the traditional mass. <clears throat> and we want to be able to be there you know, for, for those people and have the resources to, that mm-hmm. they're looking for to provide for them. Um, so I, I think that uh, we will can definitely continue that work in this coming year and hopefully expand our audio and visual media, especially. All right. Well, All right. Um, good working with you, Jim. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> I mean, as always, uh, uh, we ask, uh, we're, we're always happy to have people's prayers and uh, the, the normal like, share, subscribe. And uh, if you're so inclined, uh, you know, um, again, you can. I would point out, instead of just vaguely asking for money, that there are specific ways to, uh, to I should say, you can uh, shepherd your money into a specific part of the apostolate so as an example if you really want to see more podcasts or you want to see more content yes. here uh, we do solicit funds just for the podcast so you can go to sspx.gifts and scroll down to podcast or contact us and say it's for the podcast uh, that does help us even know what you know specifically where people want their money to go so um, right other than that the usual forms of support uh, every every single day is appreciated every single day we see the the fruits of it so um and it's, it is humbling to work uh, for such an apostolate and uh, look forward to a busy year. Yes, absolutely, Jim. Right. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for listening to or watching the SSPX podcast. Please keep in mind the best way to help more people see these videos and to hear this podcast is to subscribe on YouTube or subscribe on your favorite podcast app and rate or review wherever you listen. Also, please remember, this is an apostolate. It's free to listen or to watch anytime, but we also need your help. Would you please consider submitting a one-time donation or sign up for a small five, 10 or $20 a month donation at sspxpodcast.com? This helps us to continue this important work of sharing the beauty and the truth of traditional Catholicism with as many people as possible. Until next time, thank you for listening and God bless you.